Good morning. Last week, we had the absolute pleasure and joy of introducing to you for the very first time, Mr. Lynn Uhall. Now, we had so many questions that we wanted to ask him just out of our excitement that it wasn't, it was, it was too many questions for just one episode. So what we decided to do was to split that one episode into two parts. And so today we are happy to share with you this very special part two interview from last week. And we hope that it encourages and inspires you just as much as it's encouraged and inspired us in what we do. And if you would like to learn more about the Holy Spirit Missionary Sisters, we invite you to visit us online at www.ssps-usa.org. Also, you can follow us online via social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can follow us at these various locations down below. Me. All we ask is that you would like, comment, and share all of the encouraging messages that we send on a weekly basis. We are so thankful again for you stopping by and supporting us here. My name is Andrew Dixon. Welcome to Christ Over Coffee. express the joys of seeing freshman students becoming graduates? Is there a feeling of fulfillment knowing that those leaving the hallowed halls of Divine Word College are going to be the ones furthering the gospel in places most in need? You know, I've been in vocation ministry long enough, over 20 years now, but I've seen some men enter formation and uh, here at Divine Word College, and then they graduated and they completed and professed vows after novitiate, and then went on and professed perpetual vows as brothers and priests, and then got ordained as priests, you know. Um, you know, so I've seen some of them come through the whole process. And uh, I guess there's a little personal sense of satisfaction, uh, but you know, it's really not about me. It's about watching them grow and become the ministers that God wants them to be and uh, the difference they're going to make in the world. What, what I find for my part is that I'm a small part of their process. Uh, I help as a vocation director, I help them decide to maybe make an application to Divine Word College. Uh, and then the formation team comes in and helps them grow in that vocation. And um, it's a combined effort. It's a team effort. It's not about just a vocation director or the formation team or a specific professor in the college level in the classes. It's, it's a combined effort that we all help young men and, and even young women uh, develop uh, and grow in their vocation and recognize their skills and talents and um, use them to benefit the, the church and spread the, the good news and the gospel message around the world. Um, so as I said before, it's very, very much of a humbling experience to walk with people on that journey. I'm very honored to do that. Um, I, I have some folks now that are, are, you know, just moving into their final stages of preparing for ordination. And it's just been happy to be part of that. And I think for me, I can't be all around the world. My ministry is here at Divine Word College, helping young men enter our formation program. But when I can help someone, and then that person is able sometimes to get out of the United States and move around the world, whether they go to uh, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, wherever they go, I think there's just this little part of me that goes with them. So my ministry is just a small part of a bigger process that goes on but it's my way of contributing, uh, not just to the ministry of the Divine Word Missionaries, you know, how we help form men to become members of the Society of the Divine Word, but it's my contribution to the global church, the, the church and how we can spread the message of Jesus around the world and, and where we reach the poor and the marginalized, where we reach 
people of other cultures and where we are in dialogue and work with people of different religions and help all faith seekers to to find God and find meaning in their life. And like I said, I can't do that all around the world. But if I can help 10 guys or 15 guys or 30 guys get to that point, then just a little part of me goes with them. And, and, and there's some sense of um, appreciation to God to having been able to be part of that bigger process. Mr. U-Haul, thank you so much for joining us again today. And I just have one final question. What advice would you offer those who feel called by God to do something meaningful in this life, but aren't exactly sure what it is, let alone how to discern it? That's a very interesting question. You know, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is I was just recently at a uh, Catholic high school in the Chicago area, and uh, the students were going around asking questions of various vocation ministers that were there with different religious congregations. Sometimes we call it like a vocation fair. And the students come in and they meet with different vocation directors and they learn about different congregations. And one of the questions the students were supposed to ask is, is what would you tell somebody if they wanted to explore a religious vocation? So what would we, what advice would we give them if they wanted to explore religious vocation? And I said, do that. And they looked at me and I said, do that. And they're like, do what? I said, explore a religious vocation. Explore it. Take the time. I said, you just asked, answered your own question. Because so often, an individual may think about becoming a priest, brother, sister, but they push that out of their mind. Not me. That can't happen to me. I don't want to do that. And for whatever messages they tell themselves, my parents won't approve. My friends will think I'm weird. Um, you know, I, I think about getting married. And so how can I... How can I be a priest, brother, and sister? Because I thought of being married and having kids and having a career. And I'd like to have a lot of money and, and have a good job and own my house and a Lamborghini. And, you know, and they tell themselves all these messages. But somewhere else, God has another message saying priesthood, brotherhood, sisterhood. You know, you, you, they hear it, they think of it, but then they push it down deep inside them. And sometimes that's why we get these belated vocations because they're finally surfacing again where they have matured and they've learned a little bit and, and now they're open to this explore the call. So that was my advice to these young high school students is if you've had a fleeting thought of being a priest, brother or sister, explore it. Don't push it down. Don't run away from it. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Explore the call. Take the time to dive into that and entertain those thoughts a little bit. And then once you've entertained them and you've prayed about them, go to the next step. Talk to the people who know you the best. Talk to your parents. Talk to your brothers and sisters. Talk to your good friends. I firmly believe that God talks to us through the people around us. And some people may not like the idea of someone becoming a Catholic priest, brother or sister, but others may. And listen to all of the feedback, take it all in. But then again, take the next step, get a hold of a vocation director, talk with someone that's kind of trained like me and other people that have the ability to help guide you in this reflection and help guide you in entertaining these thoughts about religious life. Uh, find like-minded people is another step. Find other people who have had these thoughts and you meet them through vocation directors because we bring people together in a group, you know, and have people talk about these things together. Um, enter formal spiritual direction. Find a religious leader. It could be a layman, laywoman, a sister, a priest, a brother, anybody who can help guide you in understanding a little bit about a spiritual journey and, and where God might be calling you. And, and so these are things that you can do, an individual can do that helps enter the conversation conversation helps entertain that thought of what god may be calling somebody to do and i i think it's through that dialogue through those conversations that we really come to understand what god's calling us to do and so those are some steps people can take that if they've had that fleeting thought maybe i should be a priest or a brother or a sister those would be options that someone could take uh, things they can do to concretely explore that call and entertain those ideas for a moment in time. Well, I hope
hope that we didn't disappoint because we truly enjoyed this part two session with you today. We want to thank again, Mr. Lynn Uhall for stopping by and know that you're welcome to join any time you would like. We really enjoy speaking with you and hearing the encouragement from what God has been doing and continues to do in your life. If you feel like God is calling you to religious life, we hope that you would give us a call today at 847-441-0126. And until next time, remember, we're going to be walking this life one sip at a time. Thank you so much for joining us here at Christ Over Coffee. May God bless you and your families. Take care and may you have a wonderful weekend and try to stay cool. Bye bye.